Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. How's it going everybody? So we're sitting in my my 2013 Nissan Leaf, my electric vehicle. I've been driving this for about five or six years now. And obviously I'm upgrading to the Ford Lightning F-150, so I'm gonna get rid of this whole car, but I have it kind of sorted out HF and VHF, UHF radio wise. And for the longest time, I've, I've showed you how to set up mobile radios using this platform and, and how to go through it and all that stuff to, to get good results, to get good quality, low noise for all that stuff. But I never really actually showed you the performance. And I think there's a bit of a misconception that electric vehicles create a lot of noise. The truth is they really don't. Check this out. California's open, buddy. Hey guys, six NAV. What's up, Josh? Hey, buddy, you are loud and clear. You got a great signal here into Cerritos, California. Uh, I appreciate, the, uh, appreciate the compliment there. Yeah, you're definitely uh, uh, over 5'9 here into Texas. We work in a lot of California, Oregon, and, and uh, Washington stations, so the pipeline's open on 10 meters today. Uh, QSL, so it's uh, five five here. Uh, got real low signal, like real low noise floor, but you sound really, really good, like perfect audio quality. Hey, Roger, Roger. I think Frank wants to work you. Uh, stand by one. Hey there, Josh. This is Frank. Hey, AG5A, how's it going out there in California, man? <laughs> it's good, it's good. I'm actually shooting a video uh, on electric vehicles and ham radio, and you guys sound really, really good into here. So uh, it's a 5.5 five to you as well there, uh, Frank. Thanks for the contact. Now, sure, that was 10 meters, which is uh, generally not too noisy uh, in and around the suburbs. Believe it or not, it's, it's actually a pretty good band to work with. So let's flip things over here to, let's go to 40 meters and we'll tune up my ATOS antenna. By the way, 5.9 on the ATOS on the FT891 talking to Jason on their FTDX10 and they gave us a 5.9 and we gave them a 5.5. I don't know exactly what antenna they had, but they sounded fantastic. Uh, you know, it's, it's probably more the receiver on this thing than uh, the receiver on their end. Pound for pound, output, power, etc. they've got better receivers on their end than we do on this FT891. Um, so we're going from the one of the lowest bands on the ATOS all the way up to one of the highest bands. And now we are... Listening to QSO, we got an under S1 noise floor. I am sitting at a park, so there is a bit of a lower noise floor here, but uh, so far it's really good. So am I doing any kind of magic? No, not really. I have uh, done a really good job of grounding and bonding my station, and I've put chokes on the power and the feed line on my radio. And by chokes, we've got, you know, toroid cores that we've wrapped the coax and the power leads through as many times as I can. Now that's not to say it's all, you know, sugar plums and fairy tales in EVs, hardly. In fact, there are bad EVs, like I've heard Teslas create a lot of RFI, I have no evidence of that this is just rumor uh, but i can tell you having both used the lowest common denominator my nissan leaf this 2013 which is kind of like the first really market appeal ev that came out on the market and now my ford f-150 which has also pretty low rfi there are a couple of things that do cause noise that i will explain to you and i'll demonstrate it here uh, with the radio so check this out now we are running with uh, automatic climate control and we've got about an S3 peaking to S4 noise floor. If I turn that off, just watch the watch the waterfall there or the noise floor. And all of a sudden that station that really wasn't peaking, we hear just fine. So the climate control in a lot of EVs can be a problem that can lead to some RFI. A lot of EVs, this one included, 
has a heat blower and it's powered off of the 12 volt accessory battery. By the way, uh, for all people that are interested in EVs, the 12 volt accessory battery is just like a 12 volt car battery. It runs the lights, the entertainment system, the dash, all that stuff. It can't run those devices off of the drive battery. It's way too high voltage. So they use a accessory battery to do that. And then there's an inverter that takes power off the drive battery and charges the 12 volt battery. That inversion process can create noise depending on the type of system you have. And if it's a constant draw, like a heat pump, like my climate control has, then you can introduce noise that way. The solution, just turn it off and you're fine. Your noise drops right back down. Much like being at home, you'll find there are some situations where certain bands are gonna perform better than other bands for whatever reason, the, the ambient RFI, whatever devices you have in the vehicle is causing more noise on say 40 meters than on 20, 30, 10, whatever. I found in general, the lower frequency bands uh, suffer a bit more noise and then sometimes the high bands like 10 meters can also generate some noise. And that's largely from just stuff that's in the car. Again, you know, the inverter system that's taking drive battery power and putting into the accessory 12 volt system and just running some of these devices like the heat pump and whatever. However, there's one more thing that can generate some noise that I'll explain to you right now. That thing is the regenerative braking system. When you take your foot off of the accelerator or the power switch, if you will, on a lot of EVs, it will kick on regenerative braking or assistance, if you will. And that's often seen as these green dots on the dashboard. Those green dots are showing you that it's using some of that drive momentum to take power of the rotating wheels and the mass of the vehicle in motion and applying it back into the motors and recharging the drive battery with it. Now recovering power via the regenerative braking is you know, a fundamental law of thermodynamics. You can't ever recover more than you've lost. I think we would all understand that. But that process of regenerating power can in some cases with some EVs lead to an RFI issue. I guess the takeaway in this whole video is that your, your mileage is gonna vary a lot. Much like internal combustion engines, some are gonna be more RFI noisy and others will be more RFI quiet. It's kind of the luck of the draw. Now you can mitigate a lot of that noise by really good bonding. Remember, what do we do for really good bonding? We take the positive line and we go direct to the positive terminal. If you want a little junction breakout box to, to break, help it break out the power lines for multiple radios, that's fine. And take your negative line or the return line, neutral line, uh, back to a ground mount that's usually the screw or bolt that's by your accessory battery, your 12 volt battery. This goes the same whether you're in an internal combustion or an EV or a hybrid. If you do that and you apply chokes to the feed lines going, the feed line and the power going into your radio, you'll often do pretty well. There will be some exceptions. Some bands will just be completely dead to you. And unfortunately, aside from swapping out alternators or changing the way you drive the vehicle, like turning off climate control, there isn't a whole lot you can do. Now I'll leave you with this. I only have any kind of experience with internal combustion engines and ham radio and electric vehicles, full EVs. I don't know how hybrids go. I've heard that they have their issues, particularly with having so much inverter time going between the internal combustion engine and applying power back to the drive battery. So that's gonna change the way and the effect of your driving and your effect of RFI more than anything. Again, those are all things that are gonna vary considerably based on your car. So I hope this helps. Just because you got an EV, that doesn't mean you can't do ham radio. And uh, there are plenty of things you can do, like check out this video I have posted on setting up ham radio in a mobile vehicle. It's the same kind of terminologies and process regardless of which type of vehicle you have. So I hope it helps. I'm Josh KI6NAZ, thanks for watching, 73. Well, that was it. It's time to say farewell to this vehicle. It's time to rip all the ham radios out of here <coughs> and get it sold off to somebody else.